Hello everyone. A while back I made a video on this Snap Circuits uh, circuit that is actually a tone generator for any siren. Uh, it works for PA speakers or even the Snap Circuits speaker itself. And I got a request to make a tutorial, so I figured I might as well. Um, now, if you want to make this, I can't guarantee that every Snap Circuits will have all the parts you need. Uh, the one that I have is this one. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't actually know which part here is the name. There's so many different things. Here's the box. Uh, the box looks like it got hit by a train, and it probably did, but that's not the point. Um, if you can figure out which snap circuits this is, if this is the one you have, it should work perfectly for you. Otherwise, it might be a little hard to build, but I'm sure you could figure out a way. And, of course, if you know what each of these components are, you can just use an actual one. You don't have to use the snap circuits one. You could probably even make a circuit board, but I don't actually know what these do. Uh, the end result of this is going to sound something like this. And it has multiple features, such as high-low, uh, whale, and alternate whale if you combine those, or pulse whale. You can do a ton of different things with this. Uh, if you just turn it on by itself, it'll just make a single pitch. And what these really do is just change the resistance to vary the pitch. But uh, the way it's set up, it'll act like you have control of all different signals. So I'll show you how to build it now. Alrighty, everyone, here's our first layer. Uh, what you're going to want to start out with, uh, we'll start on the bottom left here because that's where the battery case is. Uh, you're going to want to put it one diagonal up and right from the corner. And uh, you're going to want to make sure that the left terminal is on the top part if you're looking at it from this way. Uh, and then right below the positive terminal, you're going to want to put the slide switch. And it should be positioned like this. Then right above the slide switch, you're going to want to put the PNP, and it should be positioned like this, so that the name should be upside down when you're looking at it with the slide switch like this on the bottom. Uh, then you're going to want to put the NPN right one over from it here. So this is one up, and this one is one to the right. Uh, this one should end up, if you're doing it all right, uh, with this spacing from the end, and... Uh, then right below it here, uh, we're going to want to put this 100k resistor. Uh, you could put other ones too, but it's going to make the pitch ridiculously high if you don't put a really high resistor. So what you're going to want to do is put this right after the on-off switch, and it should end up being lined up with the NPN if it's all in the correct placement. Uh, now you're going to want to put a single piece here. Uh, that's going to hold up a different piece later. And you're also going to want to put a three long piece right to the one of the NPN. And that should be one from the top once you get in place. Then put the whistle chip here, lined up with the NPN here. And that should have the same placement as the battery where it's one left and one down diagonal from the top right corner. And then you're wanna, you want to put a five piece that's lined up with the NPN right here, and it should line up with the battery as well. So you can already see that's going to connect like that. Uh, and last but not least, you're going to want to put the speaker wire right here. Uh, even if you're just using a normal speaker piece that comes in the set and not a uh, loudspeaker like I'm using, you're still going to probably want to put a jumper wire because then you can move the speaker around and it's a bit easier to work with the circuit. So put one end of the jumper wire here. Uh, the other end would connect to the speaker and then you'd have a separate jumper wire coming back, but that's going to be on a different layer. So here's a view of this layer to make sure you have it right because making sure the spacing's right on this one is very important. And then we'll move on to the next. Alrighty, layer number two has 10 or 11 pieces, and they're almost all just connector pieces. So, starting in the top left, we have a four long piece, which connects from the five up here to the 
negative terminal of the battery, just like that. See how it goes on here. Uh, then to the side of it, we have this, which goes from one of the speaker wires to the PNP. And that's just gonna connect right here. Uh, you're gonna wanna put a single stud here on the end of the whistle chip that'll support another piece later. You're gonna want to put this going from the NPN to the other end of the five long piece. And uh, although this goes directly over top the whistle chip, it doesn't actually have a stud on the bottom. So that shouldn't connect with the whistle chip. It actually just jumps right over it, even though it's the layer on top of it. Uh, and speaking of which, this one does go to the whistle chip. It just goes right there. And this one just hops on right here to the NPN, and that connects the NPN to the whistle chip right here. Uh, and it is important that it sticks out a block here because that's going to be important for the next layer, uh, even though it looks redundant right here. Uh, then you're going to want to connect the PNP to the NPN. I know that's confusing, but uh, just crazy names. I didn't name them. Uh, point is, you're going to put one here from the wedge of the PNP to this one. And you're also going to want to put single block right here. You're going to want to connect the switch to the resistor with this. And importantly, you are going to want to put the RV right here. This is a really important control because this is how you do wind ups, wind downs, and whale. Now for the third layer, we only have six pieces. We've got, first off, top left corner, you can put your other speaker wire. Uh, this can either be one of these that you spliced to attach a separate speaker, or it can be just one of the connectors that goes to a speaker outside of the circuit. Um, then right here, you're going to want to jump these two with this 100 ohm resistor piece. Uh, right here, you're going to want to put a two block piece. Uh, sorry, there's supposed to be that there. Uh, you're going to want to jump the piece between the switch and the PNP with a two block long one. Uh, right here, you're going to want to use a 0.1 UF the C2 piece, and you're going to want to jump it between the tip of the PNP and the 100,000 ohm resistor. And you're going to want to put it right there. Uh, right here, you're going to want to connect the whistle chip and this piece with the number two block. Uh, and right here is something interesting. So if you have extra resistors lying around your house, uh, they got to be fairly powerful, although I forget what this one is. Um, you can actually create a high-low feature. Let me turn it on so I can show you what this does. So when you press this button, it adds a jump that makes it go around the resistor. So there's less resistance, and that means that it's a higher pitch. So you can use this to manually add coding to it. Uh, but if you don't have extra resistors lying around your house, uh, if you have the same kit as me, then you should have another one of these. And you can just put it between that gap there. And then with that, you are all done, and now I'll show you how to use it. Oh, and I almost forgot to show you how to actually add this resistor if you do have one. What you're going to want to do is just uh, take your piece, and I can't really do it with one hand only, but you're basically going to want to thread part of the wire into the hole, and then snap the hole down, and that'll clamp it in place. And you just want to connect it from each end of the switch underneath here. All right, this should be pretty simple to use, and it's actually got all the features that you could possibly want, because it can do high-low, pulse, whale, and steady, or any combination of those. Uh, 
It'll make a single tone when you turn it on, but you can use the slide switch here and the push button to manually make it do any mode. Uh, I've got it connected up to two loudspeakers here. I've got this one that's in a box and this one right here, which I've got facing down because it's a little louder. And you can actually connect them both at once. Uh, it does work. I'm not an electricity expert, but I'm still a little surprised by that. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's first look at steady. If you want to do steady, you're going to want to uh, turn it on. And as you do that, I'll have to do it with a little delay because I'm filming with one hand. Uh, but you're going to want to turn it on and slide it up. And then if you want to do will, you can do the same thing, but make it slide up and down as you go. And you can do that in whatever fashion you like. Just kind of do it to how, what feels right. And then if you want to do pulse, you can do either of those while just turning the slide switch on and off. And if you want to do high-low or alternate whale, you just have it on here. And you can press the button as you go. It's going to be a little hard to show you, but you can still do high-low while you're moving this. It'll sound better if you have two hands to do it, of course, because then you can control one thing with one hand, one thing with another hand, and do it at once. Uh, and that's how you do it, so I hope you enjoyed, 